So I had a very successful gardening season here on Black Hills Living in Zone 5A last season. I'm always looking for ways to preserve that harvest and I'm going to try fermentation. So I'm making sauerkraut and I'll also be doing a video on kimchi. I hope you enjoy. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button below and the bell icon to be notified when I have new videos that come out. I appreciate all the likes that you give me and any comments or questions that you have. Hey everybody. So I got this new fermenting lid that I'll include in the links below that burps itself. So I'm going to start with sauerkraut today. So I've got a head of green cabbage. I have some filtered water to rinse it with because you don't want chlorine in the water that will inhibit or um, mess with the fermenting process. I have unodized sea salt, my measuring spoons, and chopping knife. This is a wooden pounder. It's not a flat one that you, you see with fermenting kits, but this is from the berry chinois that I make my wild choke cherry syrups and jellies from, so I figured this might work. I've got the fermenting lid and a half gallon mason jar, wide mouth, a wide mouth fermenting weight, it's glass, keeps the food submerged, and then a large bowl and my brand new, oh my gosh, my brand new extendable cutting board that has all the bins in it for waste and different things you're cutting and then a tablet or phone platform. So excited about this thing. I'll include a link in the bottom for this too. It's a bamboo cutting board. So the first thing we're going to do is rinse off this cabbage with this filtered water. And then I'm going to use my microfiber towel and get some of that moisture off of the outside. These microfiber towels are great. I use them for drying produce that I've cleaned for cooking. I use them to clean up messes. I use them to clean my glasses. So I'm gonna peel off the outer couple of leaves, but I'm gonna keep those to cover the fermenting food and the liquid. And I'm gonna put these underneath that weight. So we'll save, I think we'll just save that one. The rest of these look pretty good. Otherwise I would peel off more of them if they were brown or had any problems with them. So I'm going to core this and shred this cabbage. So now I have this wedge piece with the core in it and I'm just going to put it in the waste bin. We'll get rid of that. My composting worms won't like that so I won't keep it for them. So now I'm just going to shred by doing about an eighth to a quarter of an inch shred kind of on the points and I just keep turning it so I get these thin not too long shreds that are an eighth to a quarter inch wide. So this is what my shreds look like. About like this. About a quarter inch wide maybe. So do that with the entire cabbage until you've got it all shredded up. I've got all my sh cabbage shredded up, put in the big bowl. Now I'm going to put a tablespoon and a half unidized sea salt over this. One tablespoon, about a half. And what I need to do now is massage this salt into the cabbage for five minutes. This is going to bring the juice out of the cabbage, some of the water. Now I'm going to cover this bowl with plastic wrap and let it sit for one hour before I pack it in the jar. Okay, it has been an hour since the sauerkraut has been resting, so I'm going to uncover it. I'm saving this leaf. 
All right, so I'm gonna get it put into this big jar and I'm gonna put it in in levels. So I'm gonna put in about three inches at a time and then I'm gonna pack it. Try not to make too much of a mess. Okay, so I'm using this wooden tamper. tamp it down and that brings out more juice as well because we need the whole mixture once we get it all in here to be submerged in the salt water, this brine. You need to have four inches of headspace in the jar. That's why I'm using these half gallon jars. So, four inches of headspace. I'm actually going to pound it a little more vigorously to get some more juice because I don't want to have to create additional brine to cover it in. That seems like kind of a hassle. So, let's see if I can get this thing to juice up a little better. All right, that has juice all the way up to the top. It is juicy enough, I believe. So I'm gonna put this leaf on the top, or at least part of it, to be able to cover the entire surface in there. Plus I'm gonna put that glass weight on. But I want this leaf to cover, just to kind of weigh the whole thing down, even on the edges. I don't know if I should fold that over or what, but now I'm going to put a glass weight on there. And that will hopefully keep everything submerged, except for that top leaf. So now, this lid, I'm going to dial it. Today's the 9th, so I'm going to move this over, if I can get it to move, I'm going to move this over to 9, so that reminds me that I started this on the 9th. Now I'm going to put it on here and seal, and it's got a self-burping valve in here. I'm going to put the lid on tight. I know that I started this on the 9th, and in 10 days I'm going to check it. I'm going to store it in my pantry upstairs here in my house, where it's between 70 and 80 degrees at all times. And at 10 days after you check it, it's not ready to go. It's not sour enough. It doesn't taste quite how you want it to. You've opened it to find that out. You put the lid back on. The system comes with a vacuum. And this is the only time you would use it. You don't need to use this for any of the fermentation process once you've sealed it. But if you have to open it, it's one to two pumps. It takes the oxygen out of the jar so that you can close it up again and continue to let it ferment if necessary. So there you go. That should be ready sauerkraut in 10 to 30 days.